Hi there guys, so I am back with another video for you guys, a um, little bit of a life update. Um, one of the last things that I really want to talk about so that you have an understanding of um, you know, where, where my life is headed right now and the direction of my content. Uh, before I jump into things that are more specifically related to like hashtag mom life stuff and pregnancy. Uh, so as you know, I moved. This is my new location. It's not a permanent location that I'm in right now. A lot of people have been complimenting the record collection in the background. I can't uh, claim ownership of that. That doesn't belong to me. I'm currently uh, staying in a new place uh, temporarily until I can find my own place. Um, so while this is beautiful, this is a very, I would say it's a very me aesthetic. This doesn't belong to me, so I can't take credit for it. Um, I have moved back to Canada. That's the big surprise. I've been living in um, Europe and uh, I, I lived in, in uh, South Korea for uh, a little over a year. Um, for the, I mean, like, this is my first proper move back to Canada since 2010, guys. So uh, I've been the um, cringe meme of the millennial girl traveling the world and, uh, you know, sort of experiencing different cultures around the world for a long time now. And I'm sure a lot of people are thinking maybe, you know, you got out, you escaped the dystopian liberal nightmare that is Canada. You know, you made it to Europe, you found a European man, why not just put down roots there? And while I understand that, um, and I would just like to say that, uh, like that's always an option, if things don't work out here, we will be packing our bags and going back to Europe. Um, I really wanted to give Canada a shot with regarding to raising my family. I am a patriot. I um, really consider myself to be a Newfie before I would consider myself to be a Canadian. Us Newfies like to make a little bit of a distinction between ourselves and the mainlanders. But you know, I am a patriot. I care about this country. Um, I don't feel right abandoning it forever and you know just saying oh it's a liberal mess just you know take the black pill my country's a write-off um it's not to say that the situation here in this country isn't grim it is um and it's a daunting feeling in a way coming back to start my family because of you know things like Bill, Bill C-16, Bill 89, things I've talk, talked about on this channel ad ad nauseum. Um, I am very aware of the situation in this country um, and the potential for this country to be headed down a very dark path. Um, but that doesn't, in my opinion, warrant a kind of like the response of a coward, which is to flee, you know? I, I didn't leave Canada, you know, almost 10 years ago because I thought it was a country going down the tube. I left the country because I was, you know, very curious about the outside world, having gr grown up in a very isolated, um, and very isolated and rural place. The, you know, the idea of, traveling the world and experiencing all that it has to offer was very appealing to me. So it, I didn't leave because I hated Canada. And I don't hate Canada now. Um, so, you know, not coming back to give it a chance and, you know, raise my children as Canadians, uh, I think would be uh, hypocritical, to be honest. For me, you know, to be sort of touting nationalism as a virtue um, and then to abandon my country. I, that's, that's, not, that's not the kind of person that I am. Um, I actually believe what I say and um, I've moved back. So now that doesn't mean that there aren't precautions that I have um, decided to take as a result of being aware of the current state of our country. Um, 
I'm not gonna say exactly where I live, obviously, because this is Canada. <laughs> And I don't want to be doxxed. I don't want, you know, people harassing me um, because of my opinions or because of what I say on the internet. Um, but I've moved to um, northern Canada on the west coast. Um, that's as much as I'm going to really say about my specific location. Uh, I'm sure you guys can understand that. But um, just to give you an idea of how far north um, I saw the northern lights for the very first time. Uh, on Friday. So that's really cool. Um, it, it feels like winter here compared to, you know, what winter is like in Europe, which is like not really winter at all. It's cold here. I know a lot of, a lot of people a little further south in the country are experiencing a very nice uh, September heat wave. That is not what it's like here. All the leaves are off the trees. It is cold. I have my winter gear on. I've got my Canadian plaid out. Um, yeah, it is north. So it is, because it's nor a very northern, cold, rural place that I am, lots of wilderness around where I am, um, it feels safer, to be honest. It feels safer than um, a Canadian city. And I'm not trying to like, you know, be over dramatic. Canadian cities um, aren't even remotely as dangerous as the city that I just came from, which now that I no longer live there, li I can tell you where I was because I never ever told anyone where I lived um, in Europe. I was living in Brussels, Belgium. So kind of the belly of the beast when we're talking about the, the sort of catastrophe that is the European Union and what's been going on with um, various countries in Europe um, over the past decade as a result of, um, you know, sort of open door border policies. Um, Brussels was kind of a nightmare. Like I've, I've lived in a lot of places in the world and I think Brussels is probably my least favorite. I mean, like it's a city. You know, so there are like cool hipster cafes, there are things to do, there are concerts, very extremely convenient. I had access to, you know, organic meat and organic produce at uh, a price point that is unheard of in Canada. There are a lot of good things about living in Brussels, but the actual feeling of living in that city was um, horrible. It was noisy. It was dirty and I can't even begin to, to explain to you how dirty it was. I mean people in people in Brussels they just kind of uh, relieve themselves on the street everywhere because I was living downtown there was constantly like puke everywhere especially on um, Saturday and Sunday and Monday mornings like after people had gone out drinking for the evening. Um, as you remember I was on a busy street downtown so there were just constant sirens and those were police sirens, okay? Majority of the time. That is representative of how much crime there is going on um, in a place like Brussels. Brussels is like a militarized city. There were um, soldiers walking around in packs of four patrolling the streets with like assault rifles because of the threat of terrorism. There were blocks of peace like everywhere to prevent people from ramming you with your truck if you're like, you know, walking down the street. This is not ideal. <laughs> this, is not, this is not the kind of place I want to live. Um, and it's certainly not the kind of place that I want to raise my family. So by comparison, um, yeah, sure, I could have moved to Slovenia, which is where you guys know my husband is from, but I don't want to be a new mom trying to learn a new language in a completely foreign alien country either, you know? My husband has been very supportive of the idea of raising our children in Canada. He wanted to give it a go as much as um, I did. And so we are not, you know, merchants of despair in this household. We are not black pillars in, pillars in this household. We are people of God. We are people of faith. We believe that regardless of the current um, political situation in this country and, you know, in the Western world, that it is going to be okay. Um, we, we believe that God is going to have um, the victory in the end. And so, yeah, okay, things are bad now. Things can change. 
Uh, we want to raise a strong Christian family so that in a generation, the kind of people that will be needed to rebuild this country after the liberals are done with it will be around. Uh, so yeah, that's where I'm at. Um, I'm in a place where I can homeschool, which is awesome. Um, I recently found my midwife um, last week because I'm gonna be trying for a home birth, which is something that I'm gonna delve into um, in future videos, which I'm really excited to talk about. Um, we are settling in here. People are so friendly. Um, and I'll just give you like a little uh, anecdote to tell you, give you a pitch, a window into the kind of community that I'm in right now. Uh, we forgot our card at the grocery store. We've been like running on um, really poor sleep quality because the, the time difference has been really rough. My husband has to get up really early for work, so I get up with him. And we're just kind of sleep deprived and in a daze a lot. So we went out for groceries, forgot the stupid card, um, and a gentleman behind us paid for our groceries for us, which was just like, ugh, I felt so like embarrassed obviously, but um, grateful and like shocked that, that, that he had done this. And he was like, no problem, don't worry about it. Here's my card. Um, you know, you get back to me when you can and we'll, we'll settle it up. So first of all, amazing. Um, we immediately, you know, the following day contacted him to pay him back because that's not a debt that we want on our minds. We wanna, you know, make good on the fact that we promised to get in touch soon. Um, he invited us for dinner um, that evening with, um, you know, his wife and another couple who live in the, in the community. So we were like, sure, let's do it. Brought a blueberry pie, super lovely, had an amazing meal. Um, found out that they're just like really lovely, wholesome people. And we're, we're introduced to another uh, couple who are a little bit younger than them have a couple kids. They invited us to their house for Thanksgiving, which is amazing. So now we have somewhere, something to do for Thanksgiving because we don't have any friends or family here yet. Um, and we really need a car. So, um, because where we are, everything, it's, everything you could possibly need is in this location. You know, I'm not like in a place where, you know, I don't have access to the things that I need. It's just very spread out and there's nothing outside of the community limits. So we, you need, a car to function here, unfortunately, it's the way it is in Canada. We're on a tight budget. They gave us uh, a recommendation for uh, a car place and he's coming to pick us up after my husband finishes work today and drive us out to this place where this guy can help us get a really cheap used car so that we can function here. Um, and he's just doing that out of the goodness of his heart. Like people here are just giving. They're trusting, giving, kind, good-hearted, helpful people. And it's like, it's that Canadian, um, that real Canadian um, identity. You know, I know we're in a post-national Canadian um, era right now, but I don't believe in that. And it feels like the people in this community um, haven't bought into that either. And that good-natured um, Canadian friendliness has just been, it's been overwhelming for me, I think, and my husband, how helpful and kind and generous people have been to us since we came here. And we really feel at home. We've only been here for a week and it's just like, it's amazing. It feels like we've really made the right move um, in t making the effort and taking the chance at coming here. So yeah, we're really happy. That's where I'm at. This is where I am. Cece has re-entered Canada. We're gonna give it a go. Um, so that's all for today. Thank you for listening. Um, thank you to everyone who gave uh, such beautiful congratulations and comments um, regarding my, my previous, my pregnancy announcement. That was just so beautiful and overwhelming for me. Um, actually to, to get that kind of response from everyone, there were a few, you know, of course, there are always a few comments, which actually, you know what, just before I go, this is getting kind of long, but I just want to clarify the fact that I said that I'm going to be like doing mom content and uh, content re related to my pregnancy. That in no way means that I'm going to be putting my baby, my future baby, my children or my husband on camera. I'm not going to be like a mom vlogger where I'm like, this is a day in my life. And here's like every intimate moment of, um, my child's day, you know? Like, I don't really believe in that. I believe that children deserve privacy. 
Um, and no judgment to anyone out there who is doing that. It's just not what I think I want to do with my family. Um, I believe that I can still promote family values, talk about pregnancy, educate people about the kind of uh, pregnancy that I will be going uh, through and, and going for in terms of the birth process. Um, and talking about, you know, homeschooling, talking about being a homemaker and a stay-at-home mom. I believe that I can talk about these things and make content about these things without actually having to um, invade the privacy of my family or my family members. So let, let just like make that clear, like anyone who's like, oh, you shouldn't put your kids on the internet. Like, yeah, I agree, dude. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for your, sharing your opinion on that. <laughs> um, so yeah, more of that soon. Um, with regard to mom content and my life in, um, Canada, which uh, I want to, I, I want to share with you guys. I made an Instagram account finally, and it's been a long time since I uh, opened up a new social media account on a different platform. I have a bit shoot, but I kind of have abandoned it. I think Instagram is maybe a better platform to do what it is that I want to do. There will be possibly Instagram stories over there with more like daily updates because my my upload schedule over here is um, kind of like more weekly or like, you know, maybe two videos a week. Um, there will be pictures, photography, um, yeah, all kinds of cool stuff over on Instagram. So there'll be a link in the description of this video if you wanna follow me over on Instagram for more daily content as well, link to my Twitter, all that stuff, you can find it in the description. So thank you for listening and I'll talk to you guys soon, bye.